Hi, I'm back again. It's been a while since I made a little video, but I want to talk about uh, something I did when I was in the Royal Navy as a young electronic engineering apprentice and we dealt with capacitors and inductors and we were told that in a capacitor the current leads the voltage okay there's a phase difference of pi over 2 radians between the current and voltage in a capacitor and conversely in an inductor there's a phase uh, phase difference again but this time the voltage leads the current okay and they told us a way to remember that with this an acronym or this mnemonic called civil so we've got the c of the capacitor the current leads the voltage and the l which represents the that's the symbol for an inductor we've got the voltage would lead the current okay so they're kind of both there uh, ask about face but i want to look a bit more closely at why this is the case like why does the current in a capacitor lead the voltage and the opposite for the inductor now there's two kind of the, the most simple explanations i can think of uh, there kind of two ways of going about it so for a capacitor it's just much easier to look at what the current and voltage is doing whereas in an inductor it's not very intuitive at all and uh, the best way he has just to do a bit of a uh, year 12 13 mathematics okay so let's first have a look at the capacitor now I've got a capacitor here and I've got an alternating power supply now if you just think like a capacitor just stores charge right now if I just look at the first half cycle I've got my voltage same wave there uh, and don't worry about the current just now now at time zero I switch on my voltage supply and uh, there's no voltage right there now there's no charge on the capacitor so there'll be a big current flowing at, as I initially switch I open the I switch the supply on yeah there'll be a big current so I've marked that here large current now as the voltage increases to a maximum we'll have a maximum charge on the capacitor and that voltage will match the supply voltage for that moment in time and no current will flow so that's represented by no current down there and if you just carry on both waves you can see the phase difference between these two peaks is a uh, 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians so the quite clearly just from that simple explanation we can see that the current leads the voltage or the voltage lags the current and that's enough of an explanation to understand there i think quite intuitively what's going on now for an inductor it's a little bit different and i think the best approach here is to use a mathematical approach so that's what i'm going to do now we're given the voltage in an inductor is equal to the inductance given by l measured in henry's multiplied by di over dt and anyone who's done a bit of differentiation in your year 12 or 13 calculus classes well no, this means a change in current. So my video just switched off there. So like I was saying, this means a change in current. That means if the current is not changing or it's DC, we'll have no voltage. Okay, there'll be no voltage dropped across the inductor. Uh, so the current needs to be changing in which when it, we're putting in a sine wave, it is always changing. And uh, when it's changing, we'll, we'll create a voltage across the inductor. So that's great. Now here I've called my supply voltage V sine omega t. Now omega is just angular velocity and angular velocity times time just gives me an angle. Okay, so that would be an angle up like sine theta in radians. So don't worry too much about the omega t representation. It just represents an angle. That used to really confuse me when I was a young uh, engineer and apprentice. So let's take this equation here and rearrange it let's make di over dt the subject that's what i've done there and instead of v let's call it v sine omega t all right so that's this part here now i can integrate both sides and i end up with a current equals well v and l are kind of constant so i'll bring that out the integration and i'll have the integral of sine omega t 
with respect to t, okay? So that's a little mathematical trick you can do if you've done your year 12 or 13 mathematics, where integration is the opposite. You can like undifferentiate something by integrating it. So that's lovely, and that will give us the current. Now I know what the supply voltage is, and I want to find out what the current's going to be. So how do we integrate sine omega t? Well, if you've done your, I think this is in year 13 maths, uh, if you sine omega t, you've got to bring a 1 over omega out. So that's what I've done here. I've put 1 over omega. So omega goes in the denominator. And I end up with minus cosine, okay? So the integral of sine is minus cosine. So there's me minus and there's me cosine. So I get minus v over omega l. This bit, I'm not really worried about that, just for the purposes of this explanation. But what I am worried about is the minus cosine omega t. Now if I look at this little graph, I've plotted me vs. It's just a sine wave, just up there, so it starts at zero, like a sine wave does. And I've got to do a minus cosine for my current. Now I've done that in red. Now if I did a regular cosine, it would start up there. Because it's minus cosine, I've got to start down here. You should know all this from your trig classes. And then I mean, minus cos is just the inverse of cosine. So if I look at my voltage and current, I can see the current, as time goes on, this time the current is lagging the voltage. And again, it's by the same amount, half a wavelength, or again, pi over two radians. All right, so I hope that gives a little bit of a idea as to how we can think about phase shifts through reactive, like, like, reactive electronic components, yeah? It, it causes trouble because now, you know, it, through a resistor, the power is just I times V. But now I times V, when we've got shifted voltages and currents in different phases, it's not going to give us what we would expect through a resistor, like a purely resistive circuit. So when you introduce capacitive effects and inductive effects in a big electrical systems, we have to count, uh, we have to consider that in our calculations and it brings in all kinds of complex complexities like complex numbers and all kinds of lovely things like that. But I'm not talking about them now. I hope you can uh, get a good idea of why there even is a phase difference between voltage and current through these very interesting electronic components. Okay, thanks very much for watching. See you later.